All right, so Jeskai, Jeskai Thousand Year Storm. This is a Jeskai control deck or more specifically blue red with a small Clarion splash here that's looking to end the game via a flurry of lightning strikes and shocks on Thousand Year Storm. We'd also potentially like chain off with Nibbids at triggering a whole bunch while we, while we draw a bunch of cards. So let's, uh, let's hop into Q and see how it goes, shall we? Previously, we've tried to play this archetype and ended up timing out. So hopefully we can click fast enough today while while i'm on my combo turns i will probably mostly be ignoring chat so i can try and click as quickly as possible twerk you later with the six month resub i appreciate that welcome back how did humans go it was just kind of clunky and awkward I'm just gonna hope they're not an aggro deck. Probably dead. Should have played the steam vents on one. I don't I don't think a matchup like this ends well for us even when we have a good draw. Although Deafening Clarion is a type of card that can definitely help us steal the game. I'm just gonna dig for a dig for a white source here. Amulet went well. The deck is really sweet. Let's just get out of here before they know exactly what we're doing. There are only six white sources. Oh, there's eight white sources. We have eight. Eight plus cantrips is probably fine. Fight with fire seems okay. Some extra blockers in here seems good. Probably trim some number of the cantrips. Rail's a little clunky. Pirate's Pillage is actually... I'm probably supposed to trim some of this Thousand Year Storm package, actually. It's probably what's supposed to happen. Just turn into a blue-red control deck. A 77. Thanks for the sub gift. I appreciate that. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Yeah, it's blue, blue, red, splash, Clarion. Cut a Clarion for a Cannonade. No, I really don't think Cannonade is very good in this matchup. The opponent's deck has multiple pirates in it. What's your opinion on mono blue players who tap out on turn three when there's a high chance they have something, they have a high chance of running Lava Coil or Clarion? I think that that's a question where you can't judge it based solely on what's going on. There's a lot of context things that surround a decision like that that can lean towards making it correct or incorrect. Like, what does the rest of your hand look like? Do you have another land? Do you have a protection spell? A lot of, a lot of little details that go into whether or not something like that could easily be correct. If we stick Murmuring Mystic on four, it probably runs away with the game very quickly for us. I think the Auto Black Bane Fire deck's really good. It has a lot of good tools to be good against both aggro and control. Hey, right cat, Merry Christmas to you and yours too. Scatter me, baby. Yeah, the opponent's hand seems seems real clunky and slow. Seems like they're trying to play a control mirror against us here. 
likely favors us. So I don't think I'm going to run my next threat into a counter spell right away. I think I'm just going to pass, especially with them missing a land drop again here. The gifts went really well. The kids, kids had a good time. Got a bunch of stuff. I'm looking forward to giving away a bunch of their their previous existing stuff when we move next month. My house, my house has a lot of stuff in it at the moment. Looking forward to thinning some of it out. So I'm gonna get the Murmuring Mystic going here rather than trying to Lava Coil the Tempest in because there's probably a good chance they have a dive down here. I only wanted one thing for Christmas and Wizards of the Coast didn't deliver. I just wanted a best of three ladder back. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted, chat. Was the best of three ladder. Yeah, Mystic. Mystic's probably gonna run away with this game for us. Nah, I've given up on Modern. I don't really care what they do in that format anymore. Modern, Modern is what it is. It's never gonna change. If you enjoy playing Degenerate Linear Magic, Modern's great for you. If you don't enjoy playing Degenerate Linear Magic, you should probably play something else. How's the, how's that saying go? What's it? Uh, Grant, grant me the strength to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I know, I know I can't change modern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, stop trying. I didn't say modern is bad. I said modern as it is, isn't going to change. It's going to continue to be this obnoxious degenerate format where like you try and linear, linear each other really hard and games are fast and brutal. And I think anybody expecting that to become different at any point in the near future is kidding themselves. Degenerate linear magic. So linear, lin a linear strategy in magic refers to a strategy that's n that's trying to ignore what its opponent is doing at all costs and just do its own game plan because its game plan is powerful and could end the game. Degenerate it with card games, especially with the way it's the vernacular is used with Magic the Gathering, generally refers to an archetype or deck that is um, that is trying to execute a combo of some sort very quickly. Exciting. Man, this this murmuring mystic is MVP. Sign me up. I like that you respond to comments without having to sub. Yeah, the interaction's the best part about Twitch. It doesn't cost me anything to respond to a message in chat. All right, so this is gonna be a fight with fire on the Tempest Shin, and then if they go to counter my thing, I can expansion my fight with fire and fight with fire it again. Jeff didn't interact, I would go watch NBA. What on God's green earth does that do? 
Tap target creature, return all tap creatures. That doesn't, that, that seems much worse than sleep. Could I have copied the wizard's retort? Sure. The, the end result was all the same though. It just like didn't really matter which, what I, what I expansioned. So next turn, this returns all tap creatures to their owner's hand. So I want to, uh, I want to not attack with things. Play, play this little baby Drake out. Baby Drake, do, 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 do. Baby Drake, do, 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 do. Baby Drake, do, 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 do. Baby Drake. Ha! Huh. A deep freeze is kind of a cute one. I don't think I've seen that one before. Really is a baby Drake now, yep. Yeah, they're probably playing like they were like were looking for sideboard slots to flesh out their mono blue deck. Because mono blue's kind of a budget deck, right? So not not too surprised he likes some budget cards to flesh out the sideboard. Did Caleb have deep freeze in the rival sideboard? Yeah, it seems like a good card. I think I'm happy with how I've boarded. I'm gonna click submit. Yeah, Deep Freeze is a sweet, sweet answer to Div Visit, for sure. I think there's probably a good chance this Thousand Year Storm deck's just a bad Drake deck. Which is, which is one of the reasons why I've really enjoyed playing the Esper Amulet deck. I don't feel like the Esper Amulet deck's just like a bad version of something else. It's just like this genuinely neat combo deck that's good on its own. How do you keep focused the whole day? I'm done after 1.5 leagues. This is my job. I get paid dollar dues to stay focused all day. That's what it does. And these, and these days are nothing. So for people that don't remember or like might be newer to Magic, so forever ago, the SCG Tour, they used to do, there were points where they're like 10 and 11 round standard opens were like the norm. So like you'd go in on Saturday and like the tournament would start at, you know, 8 a.m. The tournament would start at like 9 or 10 a.m. and you wouldn't get done till like midnight. So like playing magic here for seven hours, like just snapping off super easy. I think I think my personal record for most match matches of magic played is I at one point I played, but well, I'm really sad I didn't take the deafening clarion. At one point I had played Um I think it was 22 matches of sanctioned magic in like a 48 hour period. Just like all the magic. Looking for a land. Woof. All right, they're on to one card. Thanks for the great content. Merry Christmas. Nun W guy, thanks for the two month reset. Welcome back. Thanks for shipping your Bezo bucks this bag and this month. Things, things are not looking good for our hero, chat. Right, bottoms up is good for us. I 
think that means we're just... No, I need a Clarion. Okie doke. Survey says... Shishisha. All right. All right, chat. One and zero confirmed to be different numbers. One, one and zero different numbers confirmed. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. We get to lifelink this next turn. We get to lifelink it next turn. All right, and for my next trick, 22 point life swing. Yeah, just the, the most, the most casual of 22 point life swings. See, the secret mode of Clarihead, yep. Jace Cunning Castaway. All right. Let's try this. Goes the weasel. Thoughts on playing one dragon skull so we can dispersal. I think that's I think that's a little bit greedy in this deck because um this deck's already playing a bunch of buddy lands to try and enable the white splash, so I think putting in more is less than ideal. We don't we don't even have max clifftop retreats in this deck because we don't want too many buddy lands to have all of our lands come into play tapped as is. Well my Drake had flying, so they were dead on board regardless. I'm new to Magic Arena and don't have a lot of rares and mythics. Which deck would you suggest? The mono blue tempo deck is kind of the de facto. Like this is the this is the budget deck that doesn't require a lot of wild cards to build in terms of power level. Where I'm from, I am from the middle of Illinois, about two hours south of Chicago, surrounded by a bunch of cornfields. We don't we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of buildings out here, but what we do have is fiber internet. God bless. I have 100 Mbps upload. Oh. We're like 300% dead here, right? Okay, if there was a card in our main deck that could save us, it's definitely that card. What did I get for Christmas? A government that shut down because they don't have a budget. <laughs> uh, the holidays. All right, super dead, super dead. All right, on the off chance we don't die next turn, the murmuring mystic might run away with the game, but there's like, Pretty good chance that it runs away with the game. Yeah, I just did. And this is this is another this is another matchup where just like the thousand year storm plan is pretty bad, and we just want to be like a blue red control deck with Murmuring Mystic and if it. 
Like pirates, pirates pillage is pretty terrible against the, the threat of counter spells out of my opponent. Merry Christmas to you too, Kane Darius. Thank you for the three month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, Lightning Strike's actually pretty bad here, right? It doesn't kill a lot of their stuff. I don't. I don't want to cut all of the storm. Because, like, the deck is a thousand year storm deck, so when someone submits something that's kind of a meme, I. I like to, like, leave part of the meme in, but I am gonna cut the, the extra cost type thing that makes me discard a card. Eh, I'm gonna keep this. It's a little, it's a little ambitious, but if Opt finds our second land, search for us, can't just hopefully find us our third, fourth, and fifths from there. We've not. This is only the second match that we're playing. And we, we're two for two on matches where our opponents have pressure plus counter spells, which is like makes the Thousand Year Storm plan pretty bad. So when you have a situation like this where you miss your second land drop, you have you have you kind of have two choices. You can like sit there and play a game that you're not really enjoying and be a little bit miserable, or you can concede and like move on with your life and play another match of magic. We're actually gonna get to make some choices. So I usually elect to do the second, especially when I'm playing in low stakes environments like this. Yeah, I agree, Eddie. I wasn't sure how numbers were gonna be today, but we've been over a thousand for most of the day, which is pretty, pretty good for my numbers here. My average is right about a thousand. I have zero desire to play best of one magic. Magic has an incredible amount of variance baked into it by design, and making that variance, variance even more present by turning your games into best of one is not something I have any desire to do. Someone asked earlier if alters are tournament legal. Um, in general, that animation is really sweet. Um, in general, so long as the altar doesn't have a thickness where you can detect it when you're shuffling and it doesn't obscure the text box of the card, altars are tournament legal, but the head judge of any event that you are playing in has final say on whether or not an altar you, are, you want to play with can be used in their tournament. So if you do get any altars, you should always check with your head judge before sleeving up altars for a given tournament. I, I really don't understand why people feel the desire to comment and critique the way I talk. Pro, pro tip, if you don't enjoy something or something annoys you, feel free to go experience the free content that somebody else is making elsewhere. I will by no, by no means be offended if you don't enjoy the way I speak. That's okay, but there's no need for you to announce it that you are displeased with it, like some kind of whiny entitled child. Top retreat. Uh, is there a reason to opt now? I'm not sure. Thanks, Avocado Lad. Great. Onward, upward, backward, forward. Gateway Plaza, Mox Amber. I wonder if they have a fourth color in their deck. So obviously, they're at least Abzan here. King me, baby. What's going on, Unbanned Twin? Thank you for the 12 months of support. I knight the Defender of the Realm. Go forth and protect us from Twitch chat. I don't really know what the opponent's doing. I think this Clarion might not be good. We could. Th th this decision could bite me, though. I think I'm just going to go ahead and Discovery here. Just, like, dig for a Thousand Year Storm. Looks like we might have found a Mopey Midrange deck, which could mean that we're finally going to get to actually combo.
I honestly really like that Wizards of the Coast has started doing border extensions for their custom artwork cards. Like, people have been paying Alterus for a long time to do border extensions, so it's obviously something that's very desirable, right? So I like I like that they that that's something that they've embraced. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that on top. Oh, oh, I have this land. Okay, maybe I didn't need to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pillage. I'm gonna pillage plus expansion my pillage here for sure. Just like draw four, make four treasures. Sign me up. We got some looty. We got some booty. Looty, booty, booty, looty. I just play rail. I think I just play rail. It's not like I have a treasure map to draw cards with these. Like they're just making mana. What would you risk to beat me? What would you risk to beat me? <laughs> Time to choose. Oh, it's so exciting. Oh, Ral. You have a Christmas request? What's that, Mikey? Can you get a timeout? Of course. It's the Christmas spirit. We're giving away timeouts all the time here. Well, I have I have been off for three days, to be fair. There's a drowned catacomb, so there are at least four colors here. the turn here probably ditch the steam vents to radical idea at end of turn just like kind of waiting on a thousand year storm at this point can i sing you a carol i think there's a good chance that a lot of the people watching right now are a little christmas out man my opponent is definitely living up to their username of awesome jim as they play their fifth color of mana So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 10 mana next turn, theoretically. All right, that's a thousand year storm. All right, so I'm gonna radical idea. And then I'm gonna double lightning strike this Angrath, I think. And then next turn we can get these, these radical ideas plus shocks going. Hard a larboard. The other larboard, fool! Thousand Year Storm does stack, but I'm probably not gonna have time to play the second and get it going. I probably just wanna try and do stuff next turn. Oh, that's true. If we draw a land shock plus kick fight with fire, wins with Thousand Year Storm. That should also be lethal. So 
So now I get to shock them and then expansion copy my stuff. All right, yeah, they're super dead. Now, now I have to expansion. Hey, look at that. Look at that. We did it. The stack, the stack in this application really needs a little bit better visual it needs like i need like an expand to the left button for the stack basically so i can like see it a little bit could you imagine trying to fluster storm a fluster storm on this application all right we got we got to do we got to do the thing we got we got to do we got to do the thing Yeah, but it would be worse on here. You're right that it is bad on Magic Online, but it would be worse on this application, I think. I don't really know what the opponent's doing. I'm just going to board in some extra threats here and run with it. Is this deck at least playable now? I don't know. So the last time we timed out with it, it involved a Niv-Mizzet being in play. And a couple people commented that when you're going off with a Niv in play, it's extra slow and burns your clock faster than normal. So that seemed fine there that last turn for us, but there wasn't a Niv-Mizzet in play. I wonder how many of these come into play tapped, play it like the double tapped lands they're playing. I wonder if they're on all eight, because they definitely played the other one, the Guildgate one. Drover of the Mighty, for when you really need that sweet, sweet mana fixing. Yeah, let's check out my options here real quick. It has to be worse than Druid of the Cowl. I don't know. Not if you're not if you need all five colors of mana pikes. They left a ravenous chupacabra in their deck. It's an interesting decision. Allow me to play my creature out after you've played your four mana two-two. It's a stone cold nothing over there, huh? Next turn we'll probably run back the old uh, pillage expansion my pillage. Honestly, I might I might pillage double expansion my pillage because I have eight mana total with these treasures I already have. Get, you need we need some some booty
Oh, it didn't give me a chance to stop and play the other one. That's unfortunate. Oh, I can play Thousand Year Storm here. That's fine. I should wait till next turn, I think. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really save me anything doing it now. They have, they have blue mana right here. They have, they have Rupture Spire. Flying Trample Haste is being of your upkeep. Sure. Sure. You have, you have a dragon. Whoa! That animation is sick. Man, it's a damn shame that this card sucks. That animation was awesome. I think it's possible to make a Jun deck in standard right now. Yeah, we've played some Jun Planeswalkers on stream before. I really don't feel like there's a compelling reason to be in Jun right now is the main issue. Like the stuff that you're gaining from playing a Jun deck versus just playing green black doesn't feel meaningful. I think you end up just like being a bad green black deck a lot of the time. When, yeah, wait, wait another month for the next set and we'll be, uh, we'll be good to go. The Jun Dino's deck is okay. That's like not quite a mid-range deck. Like they're talking about like a mid-range deck with a bunch of removal spells, which is a little bit different than like what the Dino's deck is looking to do. I'm going for about 45 minutes. So if we do another 45 minutes on this deck, that puts me to about four o'clock and then one more deck puts me to about six. Perfect. And it'll be time to eat dinner. Or at least on the 17th. Yeah, that's super soon. I need to figure out exactly how, approximately how many deck lists I can play on stream between now and then. So I need to stop accepting donation decks for the current format at a point so that way we can start having people put in decks for the new format. If you, for to promote my donation deck queue a little bit, um, I adjusted some of my pricing for the deck queue. So for standard deck build arounds moving forward, they're only going to be $25 for standard. So if there's a card or subset of cards or idea that you would like to have a deck built around that you don't really want to put the effort in to do yourself for a $25 donation, I will build that deck and then play it on stream in one of my normal deck segments like we do. So if that's something you'd be interested in. Be sure to submit a form through the website when you've got good ideas. All right, so they're playing uh, some kind of wizards as opposed to drakes, it looks like. You think it will ever happen that chat submitted decks ever break standard before the pros find it? I mean, if you look at the most recent like pro tours and stuff, the pros weren't breaking the standard format. We knew all of the decks going into like the last few pro tours before the pro tours happened. How soon will I be accepting decks for the new format? Yeah, full full spoiler. As soon as as soon as the full spoiler is published, I'll start accepting donation decks for the new format. Or jingle. Now I think I think most of the people that watch what I do here understand what we do, and it happens pretty often. Like it's it, like I know other people do some donation decks, but like basically everything we play on this stream is a viewer submitted deck. So I feel like it comes up enough that I don't need to like plug it a ton extra. I'm just mentioning it now because previously I was charging uh, fifty dollars for build around decks, and I'm reducing that for for standard specifically.
Maybe I was supposed to... Yeah, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I was supposed to play the land and then expansion the Pirate's Pillage. That's probably what I was supposed to do. Although I have another Pirate's Pillage in my hand now, so that, that'll probably be fine. It'll probably be next turn, like, Pirate's Pillage, ditch this, expansion the Pillage. These drakes are going to have a hard time getting through the birds. Murmuring Mystic's really overperformed in the games we've played so far. This card's really strong. Turns out four mana young Pyromancer is still good in standard. Who'd have thunk? And they fly too, right? So it's like a little bit better than normal young Pyromancer even. Pyromancer. That is one way to put it. Yeah, there's been there's been a number of the blue-red Drake stacks that have played even Murmuring Mystic in the main deck, and I think they've been really good there. They have a lava coil as well. Lightning strike, rough. And main deck fiery cannonade. All right, double double Clarion's fine here. So I can chump block next turn and then double Clarion clear the board. That's fine. All right, let's, let's reset the board. I'd like a do-over, please. All righty. All righty then. What? What? You've got pirates build your, their, their, their deck list is interesting. This was the same one that had Cinderwind in it too, right? Yeah, it is. All right. That's something. Meme Drake's right. Thousand Year Storm definitely delivers as far as animations are concerned, that's for sure. Shock is a good pickup here. I would love an opt. I'm gonna point two of these at this just in case. Well, if I don't if I don't die next turn, we should be in a good spot to kill them. Hopefully, my opponent running out of timer for some reason. Yeah, that's it. Not a lot of these opponents have been timing out before me. It's really weird. All right, that's that should be super lethal. Yeah, the, tre the treasures have been very good for us, I agree. Mm, that's a good point. I did not play around Spell Pierce. I 
really matter here at this point. Yeah, we have, we have lethal, so. Lightning strike you. Lightning strike you. Expansion, lightning strike you. All right, so Lava Coil sounds good. The extra, I think the Murmuring Mystic's worth bringing in. Drakes and Divisit seem good. I get that we killed them with the combo that game, but I feel like this is probably a matchup where the combo's not very good. The opponent's not really playing a stock list. They've just got like a, but I, I just submitted 61 there by mistake. Opponent's just playing and playing like lots of different blue red cards. It's fine. Gotta give him give him a little bit of a handicap or up a game, right? Scene seems fine. Could use a cantrip or two, but it's got some cheap removal to deal with the early threats. So it seems good for us. Hey, look. That's exactly what I wanted for Christmas. A cantrip. Hey, Zinaru, thank you very much for the brand new tier one sub. There's a lot of great people making stuff on Twitch right now. I appreciate you supporting mine. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Been watching your YouTube standard content a lot. Finally have a time to catch a live one. Well, thanks for the support. I'm glad you've been enjoying the YouTube stuff. We're gonna be doing more standard than ever as we roll on into the new year here. I'm planning to, I'm gonna be moving my streaming schedule back to five days a week during the week, Monday through Friday. I'm gonna be doing uh, 10 to five on Mondays and Fridays and nine to five on Tuesday through Thursday. So he's playing like greater than 60 cards is generally bad. Yeah, so you can only have, you can only have four copies of a card in your magic deck and all of your best cards you're gonna play four copies of. So if you have more than 60 cards in your deck, you're less likely to draw your best cards because they're four out of 61 or however many more rather than four out of 60. I think I'm actually gonna expansion this since I have two of them. Who takes Jake off the bus? Christy was able to rearrange her work schedule. So she's working seven to three instead of uh, eight to four. So she'll be home by 3.30 to pull him off the bus. I like the art on this card too. It's really sweet. Little, little, little pretty birds. They do not have enough to kill this yet, so that's good for us. Ooh, let's see what we got. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna poke this this way. Come on. Pass the turn back. Our hand is incredibly awkward. Matt, if you're watching my stream, that person you're engaging with on Twitter is incredibly stupid, and you should probably disengage. Just want to peek. The weight is killing me. Like. I, I, I could technically spend two cards killing their Niv here, but like I let I spent two cards. I let them draw two cards. So we're, we're pretty, pretty much done here at this point. Huh. 
Well, that was unpleasant. That was unpleasant. <laughs> it's going on, Korluski. Glad you enjoyed it. I had fun making the Bogles League. How many birds are in my future here? Just one? Just one, it looks like. So that'll give us a target for this third lava coil. Hopefully we can find a cantrip next turn to try and work our way into some more lands and stuff. Oh, is this gonna... Just finally able to kill this? Yeah, that's rough. This is down to... I miss a land drop again. I'm gonna pack it in. Watching you play Bogle is one of the funniest things I've seen in a while. You just gotta, you just gotta let go and give in to the modern occasionally. Just embrace modern for what it truly is and just let it all hang out. wisely because the other one's going bye-bye <laughs> uh, okay we're super dead next game we're gonna hit some land drops for the next game what is a bogle? A bogle is a one mana hexproof creature that is the figurehead of an archetype in modern that is incredibly linear and just ignores its opponent and attacks for lots of damage. This hand, this hand has potential. It could, it could be anything. These, these four cards, who knows what they are. I believe I mispronounce a lot of words on the stream, but I believe Bogle is correct. The correct pronunciation. Bogle is a is a real word. It's not a made up Magic the Gathering word. So you can you can look it up. Looking for some lands. Johnny Stephanie, thank you for the four month reset. I appreciate the third of a year. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Huh. They ditch a phoenix. They did ditch a phoenix. All right, I'm gonna take the lava coil because they ditched a phoenix. There could be merits taking the Azcanta though. All right, I think the fact that they have a bird in the bin means I'm gonna fight with fire this rather than lava coil it, even though it's more less resource efficient. This one I might lava coil because this fight with fire is our last clean answer to a copy of Niv Mizzet out of the opponent. I think I do this because Niv Mizzet would bury me otherwise. It's a pretty good one. We really like to draw like Thousand Year Storm or Niv Mizzet or some kind of big payoff here. pick up for down the line because the anticipate could find something like a search for Azcanta that I'd want to play out right away and I'm not really going to bluff a counter spell or anything like that fire mines research it's kind of a scary card
At least their phoenixes aren't close to coming back. They bend to velocity. That card's really scary down the line. All right, let's just jam this one. Today's forecast is cloudy with a high chance of meet the search for the unknown. That's real science. Oh, I think I just pass here. Maybe I'm supposed to jam the Murmuring Mystic off these treasures. It's also possible I should take Lightning Strike to try and protect the Rails, Eric. Yeah, they just get to, like, Drake into Velocity. I guess there's only a three power, though. They don't have that many things in their bin yet. And, like, if they jumpstart this, it's, like, only going to be four powers. They'd like to jumpstart this on here, plus have other cards to play out. Like, a Shock or a Lightning Strike would be good for them. No, I have a I have a giant deck queue full of things waiting to be played, Juan. So when I'm playing when I'm playing arena, especially on stream, I'm playing I'm playing things from the deck queue. And their fire mines research is getting ready to pop off here too. This is not good for us. Hopefully, murmuring mysticus can pull us out of this match, kicking and screaming. That's super conservative on their part. So my next turn is probably going to be Mystic, Coil this, um, Fight with Fire this. Yeah, the treasures give me enough mana to do that. I guess I could have theoretically kicked Fight with Fire to kill both of these, but I think it's important to get pressure into play. Now, I don't I don't have the tools to beat a Niv and, and a and a Drake at this point, Pike, so if they have that they have a Niv too, I'm just dead. I just have too much going on. I need to like get my thing down and try and attack them a bunch. I don't, I don't have enough resources to like play through infinite more threats. I'm gonna hover so if they if they have infinite more threats, I can just, you know, pack it up, pack it in. That, that's not even remotely true, Pikes. That requires a lot more mana than I have. It requires uh, 11 mana to kick a fight with fire and expansion in. So, I think that's uh, pretty unrealistic. I do need to kill Ral here. They still have fire mines research going on, but that's unfortunate. Kind of punished for playing the land out. But I guess I needed the land to do everything I did last turn. I just go ahead and pass. I don't really wanna. I don't really wanna ditch my expansion here, which kind of sucks. I guess I could have just explosion them for three. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm just supposed to explosion them for three there actually. They haven't shown us any counter spells yet, so maybe I just do it at the end of their turn. Yeah, this just this just leaves me open to getting like spell pierced or negated or disdainful stroked. Whereas if I would have done this on my turn, they would have been tapped out. One of the biggest mistakes you can make as a player, and I think I'm getting counterspelled here, and I should have done this on my turn. Just like playing your cards at instant speed just because they're instant, a lot of the time doesn't make sense. Like, especially in matchups like this where like both players have interaction. Like if I was up three cards here, I'd be in a much better spot, right? one mana short of being able to stick thousand year storm here which sucks our draws were good though like storm storm plus expansion are both like pretty good draws for us probably dead i'll cast this next turn and see if it resolves yeah this this costs six i have five so I'm, I'm aware that I have a treasure, but this costs six. Oh, explosion for five to kill Niv. All right, yeah, sure. 
YOLO. Hey, what's going on, Stuckums? Thanks for the four months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Spell pierce me, baby. Listen, all of our wallets are very happy that Niv's not a mythic, so you shut your mouth, okay? So uh, we have a game, as they say. So we have, so we have a game. All right. So you're, so you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do 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 Bernard is also pillaging around. The treasures off the Pirates Pillage have just been incredible in this set. I wonder if Pirates, Pi Pirates Pillage is a card that we're supposed to explore in like other control decks. There's actually more scarcity of rare wild cards than Mythic. That's actually not true. So that's true when you're still building mana bases because mana bases in standard have a lot more rares in them. But for instance, when you have a pretty co complete collection in Magic Arena, I currently have like 45 rare wild cards and I have zero mythic wild cards. Don't, don't mind me. Just, just playing my big unbeatable dragon. Oh, wait, they have Fire Mines Research. It's fine. I'm going to get two triggers off of him. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I don't want to opt 2x. I want to opt plus a radical idea to be more mana efficient. I'm so impatient put these turns black red awakener. Thank you, Sal, for the biddies. I appreciate it. And we're going to be getting to the standard decks much, much sooner moving forward. So I'm going to be doing... I'm going to be moving to doing standard 25 hours a week for the time being. Since Arena is super popular, I want to lean into that popularity. Arena is popular. Do -do 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 So my plan, my plan moving forward is to do some, some MTGO and then arena every single day. So I'll be doing one to two magic online leagues in the morning to start my days. Then I'm going to be doing four to five hours of arena to follow. Yeah, I grew up doing musical theater and like Wicked, Wicked was like the big musical when I was in high school. When's the next set? It releases on Arena January 17th, so a little over a month from now. Is velocity about to be maximized in the direction of my face? It is not. That's good. All right. I would like some blockers, please. They have actual factual counter spells in their deck. What a beating. Great. Well, time to time to dig deep for a lava coil. Oh, 
They have another counter spell. We are just going to be dead. Ca casual 19 slash 4 crackling Drake. Ah, good game, opponent. That was a sick. That was a sick third game. A lot of really good back and forth there. Some some solid back and forth. Ah, we did we did some kind of some kind of cute stuff at different points in that league. But from a from a pure competitive standpoint, this deck felt like bad Drakes. Our, our better draws with this deck were just like draws that involved crackling drakes and murmuring mystics. And I really think while if you're dead set on playing Thousand Year Storm, it's probably fine. I think the assessment that on average this card's just gonna be worse than Niv and like things like that are probably true. My big takeaway from that league are two things. One is that the extra resources from Pirate's Pillage were really useful at a lot of different points in those games even outside of thousand year storm being used and this might be a card that i'd be interested in exploring in a drake shell just to like gain mana advantage on critical turns from the depth thank you very much for the three month resub i appreciate that welcome back this is a card where if we play this on four we can play niv on five with a dive down up to protect it which seems reasonable Murmuring Mystic was also excellent. So like the Drake's deck that have access to some of this card I've been impressed with in the past. And this card was also very good in the games that we played today. All right, we've got one.